Um, so call them into order. Is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Would you like to? Does that mean I have to go first then, or is that are you guys like to be in? Like no, we always we allow always allow public comment at the beginning of the meeting. So go right ahead. So. Introduce yourself. It's constant. Okay. My name is Tristan Roy. I'm from uh, East Callis, actually. So, Max Gray Road. Tristan, and, you said? Uh, Tristan Joy, yeah. Um, so, I've been in Callis my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I'm going to have you guys kind of think about hand, like, what is this? The six of you, the select board. Like five. 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 Okay, actually. Well, we're missing six. Six. Yeah, she's on her way. She yeah. comes from work, so sometimes she gets delayed. All right, sure. I can do um, that for you. So, Christine. sure. So there's, Here she is. so I'll just take that one out. So yeah. that's from GOVT, Gun Owners of Vermont. Um, that's a resolution for the what Gun Owners of Vermont is doing right now. They're doing a second hand sanctuary thing. I'm mean, like, thing we've all heard about went on down in Virginia, but um, so it's not a, it, it's, it has nothing to do like with law. It's what I'm just going to say, it's kind of like a non-binary thing or something, you know, like it's, it's only for like saying which towns are pro-gun, you know, it's not anything like that's going to go like didn't do anything with the law, but right. um, so is this on behalf of some organization? Yeah, so well, gun owner, it's gun owners of Vermont. So, um, it's like it's a Facebook, it's like a Facebook thing, is what we are pretty much right now, but we're trying to get bigger, let's just say. And then, so, um, so I have a I have a sales pitch here. Would you be okay if I read that to you? Sure. Tristan, before you do that, yeah, sure. can you just make sure I got your name right? Because we're, we'll. Yep, that's get, right. Yep. That's exactly that's, right. That's okay. exactly Thank right. you. So, if you guys don't mind, really quick, would you mind if I read that to you guys? No, go ahead. Um, so, we the people of Vermont have taken notice, and this is like gun owners, all gun owners of Vermont um, speaking. We, the people of Vermont, have taken notice through the recent growing hostility among our lawmakers towards our inalienable right to self-defense. Um, this is a, um, evidence in their attempts to pass legislation eroding our right to keep and bear arms in defense of ourselves in the state as um, protected by Article 16 of the Vermont, Vermont Constitution and the Second Amendment of the um, United States Constitution. So despite our objections um, and overwhelming evidence of the contrary, law-abiding gun owners continue to be blamed for horrendous acts of violence. Um, which continue um, to plague our country and to a much less extent our state. So like um, we live, we live in peace um, as all good people do yet continue to draw the attention of lawmakers attempting to fix the problem by targeting good people. Um, so while there is no doubt or, um, yeah, while there, while there is no doubt that our society does in fact seem to have a problem with violence, which we all do, criminalizing peaceful people for owning a tool to protect their families or themselves, um, in a good way, will solve no problems and do nothing except create more criminals, um, more felons. Um, the inalienable right to self-defense does not come from man's laws, um, these rights pre-exist all governments and are part of our national rights as persons under God. Um, the founders of this country in the state of Vermont understood the importance of arms in the hands of the common man as only, um, not, uh, um, sorry, as not only a hedge against invasion, but as a deterrent to tyranny and oppression. From our own government, um, civilian no firearms save countless more lives every year than they take. So um, often, the mere presence of a gun serves as a turn to um, violence in the hands of our weakest and most vulnerable. Um, we acknowledge the value um, Vermont's preemption law, commonly known as Dillon's Rule, and we wish to. Um, before creating our admission, you know, this resolution is no way legally binding, 
um, but a purely symbolic measure meant to give a voice to people um, of Vermont who feel that they are not being heard by their legislators. Um, so it's, it's not right. really binding. Um, it is for these reasons that we ask the board to adopt this resolution um, in the kindest way possible. We ask you that we don't, we're doing it in a civil way or not. Don't worry, we're not going to like yell at you <laughs> or anything. Um, That's good. But, <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> yep, yep. The civils are, are civil to so come. Um, of our civil um, disobedience to those who would attempt to render us a defenselessly. Um, we like ask you in the kindest way, please, that you would pass this resolution um, in defense of our rights today. So, um, and I, I'm, me, I'm asking you guys if, um, if you could like put this on the warning, if you guys would like consider putting this on the warning. I mean the town meeting one? Yep, yep. For I don't meeting. know what the deadline is to have gotten. I think I think the deadline I looked on the town calendar, wasn't it like tonight or something was the deadline to have it? Right, but like, we've already approved. we've already finished the and point. finished the town report. Okay. Um, you can, you, always could, you can always come to town meeting right, and, then propose and, it. and bring it up from the floor under new business. So you're not asking us to sign this resolution? I'm, well, I, I am asking you guys to sign it, but because there's, so you said the other person that was supposed to come that's on the select board. Yeah, she's right oh, here. Oh, she's right there, so there's six seats. <laughs> right. All right, yeah. cool. Um, so we would have to trust that there's five of us. Oh, take, five. Take, take notes for five. us. Five. Um, Do you know us? Do you want us to introduce ourselves? Um, sure, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure, well, I'm nice. Denise Wheeler. Yep. John Brabat. Sharon Wynn Fannin. I'm Rose Pelchuk. Cliff Evans. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Nice. Tell me Thanks. your name, please. Tristan Joy. Um, you look familiar. I think I've seen you somewhere. <laughs> yeah. In Callis. Yeah, yeah probably. There's wanted posters um, out there, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, in order, in, so the way the process works, in yep. order for us sure. to sign this, I would have to put it on the select board's next agenda because we have to warn an item. Okay. Before we can act on it. Right. Right. And yep. We this have is, it. So this we is can... more something that the townspeople are putting resolutions yeah. like this. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So but, but if I might, if I could. He's asking us to sign this yeah. though too. Would you? I mean, would you guys? Could you? Probably what you just said. Possibly like do that to. We well, could do that. I just put it on the select board's next agenda. Next agenda. Um, uh, but you, like I said, the best thing really to do is the brain. Is it's not going to mean it would be more meaningful if you brought to town meeting and it was voted on by the people in attendance at town meeting up or down. Sure. So yeah. that would be my suggestion and at the end of town meeting there's always an opportunity for new business mm -hmm. and this is where you can bring that up. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like that idea and let me say something about bringing it here for a, a vote. There's only five of us. We haven't had a lot of discussion and you're the first person you we've heard from Tristan about it and I really I think um, I really respect you for for bringing. This is a hard topic. Right, it's a hard topic, and, it's very hard. It's and a really I know hard you guys topic. may not all agree. So, and I'm not. And I may not agree with so, you guys either. But. Right. So, so, <laughs> okay, yeah. so but, but let me let me finish yeah, my it's thought. Fine, sure, yeah. It's you wouldn't want us to bring it all the way to vote and have it us vote no. Right. And so my thought is it's premature for us to put it on our meeting right, agenda fine. and actually have a vote because. Because we haven't heard from a lot of people. It's a really difficult subject, and you don't want to know. I like the idea of it coming up for discussion at town meeting where lots of people are there and can hear you and, I mean, your heartfelt words, and you are so respectful. I think that's powerful. I think, I think you would probably do better bringing up at town meeting than asking us to vote on it to sign it as well. The, the, good, the good thing about town meeting, like for instance, I agree with some aspects of this. Uh, right. I sure. yep. own guns. Right. And I don't want to restrict gun use to the point where you're taking them away from people. Right, right. You use them lawfully yep. to hunt yep. and that kind of stuff. And you'll have a good but, uh, but I don't agree with some of the broad contentions in here. Sure. So uh, at town meeting, somebody, you might propose this and then it could get amended on the floor where it gets narrowed to a, a different sub theme of this and that everyone can accept and 
And that might be the callous and position strong, on yes. the use of guns. And that might get you a lot more support because it'll be in the records of, it'll be in the town meeting minutes that the board, that the town's folks, the residents, the voters, acted on this and this right. is what they said and it, it might go a lot further than just having us right. yay or nay it based on what you've got here. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've never talked about this kind of an issue. I appreciate your coming and bringing it to us. I have a lot of respect for what you've done and your willingness to step so forward. So come to town meeting and bring your friends because we also need young people to come to town meeting. Right, yeah. Beyond this. Do you have that on your calendar? Town, Tristan, you know when it yep. is? Yep. Or I have the calendar. Yes. Um, I go on town, I go on March his town there. website. So you know, you know when it is. Yeah. 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 So. So bring, bring this, bring, and I would advise you to bring extra copies sure. to hand out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we can let the moderator, we'll let the moderator know that this issue is going to come up at the end of town meeting. We can let him know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. sure. And you can talk to but it, Gus Selig, I yeah. think for somebody who's bringing something to have a conversation is helpful too. Right, right, right. sure. So that would be, that would actually be your best bet. And you'll get a lot more input and a lot, you know, somebody might have another really good idea to change or add or Something. So we'll expect to see you at town meeting. Sure. Yeah. Congratulations, Thanks. Tristan. It's first Tuesday of March. Stepping Thanks. into the political process. Yeah. yeah. There you go. It's Good nice for stuff. you. You wanted to say something? I did. I have a quick question. Do you think it would be helpful if um, what Tristan read was printed on the back of that? Yeah. So Actually, yeah. That was, that. Yeah. That's a sales pitch that they right. Like, and what has a lot of language in it. Sure. Right. Right. And don't yeah. forget, you can also put your cause out there ahead of time and post something on Front Porch Forum. That right. this is a resolution that you're going to bring to town meeting. It'll probably generate you a lot of emails one way or the other. Right. Um, but it will ha it will give you some heads up about what people are thinking and what answers you might need to have at town meeting to what they're saying. Right. So that would be another suggestion is to, to put something out there on Front Porch Forum. Sure. That's, that's a good idea. Thank you. So. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Tristan. Yeah, you're thanks welcome. for coming. Thank you. Nice well, to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice yeah. to meet you. Come Thanks back for coming. Yeah, come yeah. back and see yeah. us again. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Nice to meet you. Tristan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. 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 Or is there any other public comment it's not on the agenda? Okay. Um, Toby, you're up. Let's go over the agenda items there. Mm -hmm. You were going to go and meet with um, staff at First Student to talk about the radio contact and all that. How was your visit with, and when did you go? I went this morning. Timely, make sure we're on right on time. Right. Uh, and met with the manager, Lynette, who manages the first student garage in Montpelier. Um, and we discussed... Um, first student is the bus company. Mm -hmm. Correct. The so bus company, right. Yes. Um, and discussed, you know, communication. If there's a bus that has a, an issue on Callis Roads, how do we let the town highway crew know about it so they can assist? Um, my thought was they could use their um, their radio system to talk to us, but it turns out that they have upgraded their radio system to a digital digital system, which is much more powerful. But our radios can't talk to their radio, huh. so that oh. that eliminates that link. Did you come up with a different solution? Well, I talked with Lynette about um, you know her avenues, and one of them is to talk to Roger Hill. They can call Roger Hill on the phone, and Roger Hill can talk to us on the radio. So okay. if you know, if there's a bus out there that has reported a problem, they can call Roger Hill. Roger can reach out to the town trucks and say, hey, there's a bus on Lightning Ridge that needs assistance. So the bus driver would contact first student, and first student would contact Roger, and then Roger Correct. would contact our crew. Right. Um, the other option is the town clerk, but she's not here till 8 o'clock, so most right. of those buses have already gone by, by right. 8 o'clock, so that's, that's not right. a, that, that's not. Yeah. So, you, so just so I'm clear on this, you're saying Roger Hill will be an intermediary beyond weather issues? 
he could be. I mean, I think they've used him in the past. Well, I think, it, but it is weather related. Well, anyways, again, that's really the only radio contact that they have a, a relationship with that can talk. The other thing I suggested to him and it occurred to me while I was talking to her is that um, they can reach Guthrie in East Montpelier on a cell phone. Mm. Um, because there's good cell phone coverage in East Montpelier, and right. they have done that. So they could actually call Guthrie, uh -huh. and he has our radio channel. He could call uh -huh. us right. as well. And now, do we know that Guthrie's willing to do that? Oh, I'm sure he is. If not, I'll make him willing. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that so that's the so those are the two avenues that okay. we get done. And again, it came from an instance where we came in after plowing, and there was a message on the garage phone hey, there's a bus stuck, and it's like, well, luckily Paul had driven by the stuck bus, and it was no longer a problem, but mm -hmm. um, if, if the town crew needs to assist a bus, the phone is not the answer. And no, that's what I wanted to point out to the bus company. And did you run into any bus drivers while you were there? Yeah, it just happened to me while I was sitting there, the guys, some guys who actually run the, the Callis bus routes um, had been sitting there checking out after their routes, and I told them who I was, and they said, hey, your roads are great. So. Wait, the what did they say? Are, the roads are great. Callis roads are in great shape. Hmm. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. but so, so, so for bus drivers, they, they're very, they're okay with what they see on our roads. Yeah. That's really good to hear. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else on your visit there? Nope. Okay. Buses um, are yellow still. Is that going to change? <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know, and you didn't happen to notice that the School buses have winter tires all the way around. I did not. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you give us an update on the status of the truck repairs? Yeah, so one truck has a coolant leak, one of the 10 wheelers that Bruce drives, um, and that's been in the shop for almost a week. They've been struggling to fix it. Um, it's a warranty issue, so it's not going to cost us money. It just means that we've been down a truck for a couple of, a couple of, of snow events. Um, the other truck has a leak on Is that the, one of the other 10 wheelers? No, the other truck is the, the one-ton truck that does the county road and the salting. Oh, okay, so it's the magic salt truck. It is, it's the salt truck. Um, and it has a leak on the transfer case, um, and we're waiting for a part on that. So both trucks are up at J&B International Did Coal they Transfer. Have to get um, towed up there? No, or we, we, up we can there? drive them up there. Yeah. We and both are new trucks. Well, no, the, <coughs> the Western Star is a 2016, and the other still one's a 2019. Yeah. That's still yeah. relatively new, 2016, for one of those big trucks. Right. But it's just a leak. I mean, it's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We beat them up pretty hard. And just so the folks know that we're not running old, raggy trucks. No, these, these are, are fairly new trucks. And right. The 2019 and actually, the, two, the 2009, which we're falling back on, is still running like an yeah. Energizer bunny. So. Oh, yeah. Pre-death. that too loud. <laughs> right? Pre-death. Mm -hmm. Death, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Otherwise, how is, how's the crew holding up? Uh, enough help? Yeah, uh, well, like I say, because we had two trucks down, we only had three guys on the route today because we only had three trucks. So they had long days, two storms with so who does, very long days. Oh, no, that is three, okay. Yep, only three trucks. So they had to share part of each other's mm -hmm. routes and it took them longer, but they, they're working at it. Mm -hmm. Long days. And just Luckily, it's only a one event. It's three in the morning till 10 or 11 that day it's not a continuing storm where they have to right. come back and plow again right. so right. it's only been a one event where they're only down three trucks and um oh, i just had a question for you and they're coming in you're you're listening to the weather reports the weather advisories mm -hmm. and roger hill and underground weather or whatever weather you can find and you're lining the crew up to come in like the day before knowing anticipating Right. an event so that we're right. hopefully well prepared. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the only the, the only issue that arises if the weather forecast says it's going to be great and all of a sudden it changes and that storm comes in three hours earlier, uh -huh. we're not there's we're going to be three hours behind. So that's the only drawback to it is that um, there may be times when the weather forecast is not as predictable. I can't yeah, and I, you know, and I'm bringing I'm bringing them in on uh, on the side of caution. So if there's only a chance of flurries or light rain or whatever, I'll bring them in so that we're prepared. Um, you know, a couple of times um, I have 
looked at the weather forecast, less than a half an inch accumulation, and it turned out to be an inch and a half or two, and we were late. So right. I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. It's very helpful, Toby, for you to put something like you did on from Google. Yeah. That was so helpful yeah. to read that and see that there's a problem. Right. Be patient. Yep. Very good idea. Thank you. Go. That was a yeah. good idea, Toby. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Communication. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Toby. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Conservation Commission, you're up. We're going to get all the talk you know, about the Emerald Dash 4 update and some opportunities for the maybe the road crew to go to some trains about tree cutting. Yeah, we'll talk about that's part yeah. of the so, thing now. Um, does everybody know does everybody? everybody know everybody? <coughs> I do. I don't know if everybody I'm Stephanie I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission. We're six out of seven here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm the help maker. Also a tree warden. Mm -hmm. And True Lamb. Assistant tree warden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Larry Bush. <coughs> Mark Brown. Julie Hand. Okay. okay. So, do you need my fellow Conservation Commission members? I prepared kind of a briefing, but please jump in any time. I just tried to organize things a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we're a little behind the schedule, so. Yeah. We didn't tell me to stop any time? Yeah. So, I, I guess for a very brief review about Emerald Dash Board, Callus, I don't think, has yet, it's not yet been discovered in Callus, but it's all around us. Probably here, we just can't see it yet. Right. Because it takes a little while for it to that. manifest itself by killing the trees. So, we are considered <coughs> in what they call a critical area, something like that. So, um, we have to prepare. We have to assume that the Emerald Ash Borer is going to be here and it's going to kill most of the trees. And the trees die, um, from what I understand, um, they, it takes them maybe a couple years to die once they've been infested. The, the beetles or the larvae go under the bark and the, somehow the damage they do prevents the water from coming up to feed the tree, so it dries out, and apparently it dries out fairly quickly, which is what makes it dangerous. Because we've been hearing, I've been hearing, you know, ash trees are particularly dangerous once they're dying, because they're, it's not predictable what, what will happen. Branches will fall off, and you don't know, I mean, you can't just climb it like you might normally climb a tree to limit, because it's unpredictable, and also ash split easily anyway, so it becomes a really dangerous situation. Um, so um, we've been working for the last few years with this, you know, this group, the Urban and Community Forestry Program. Joanne Garten is the person we've been having a contact with, and they have a website that's just got more information and they've been really helpful. And last year we got a grant, we got a $2,000 grant, and we, we used maybe a thousand of it. You know, we did all those publications last year and mm -hmm. sent them around to everybody. Um, and um, so then, um, what the, so we're working on a management plan. And the first part of the management plan is to do an inventory of the ash trees. So there was this little app. Mm -hmm. People were trained and started last spring and went around. And, um, and really, the, the, the trees were classified as like either hazardous or non-hazardous. Uh, it wasn't too much subtlety in between that. And hazard trees uh, were trees that, as I understood it, were either leaning into the road or over a building. Um, or even utility lines, I guess, although the utility company would be Yeah, well, just anything that would be a problem if it, when it falls down. So these, yeah. and these trees weren't necessarily dead yet, they were just no, no, they identified are, as ones that they're like, if they die, this is what happen. They're going to die, and when they do, are they going to fall in the road? Or? So I mean, the latest is that, you know, there might be, you know, 0.1% of the ash trees that won't succumb. Mm -hmm. We have to assume they're all going to die. We're hoping that they don't all die. That's why, you know, homeowners, people with forests are encouraged to keep at least the smaller ones in order to, in case some of them might live and then we might have some ash trees. Um, so, 
Uh, it turned out, and then after we did the inventory, after people did the inventory, the Regional Planning Commission uh, mapped it all, all the information, they put, it on map, they put it on maps so we could see, and apparently 66 miles of Callis Roads were found to have ash trees, and there were a total of 3,297. Well, that's yeah. pretty, pretty yeah. concise. We will. <laughs> and just, just in the right of way. Yeah, this is not on people's side. Just the roadside. 66%, did you say? 60 66, 66, 66 miles. miles. Oh, right. And 3,297 ash trees. And it I mean, doesn't include any of the paved roads. I don't think you did. We didn't do county roads. We, we did, did county, county road, but not okay, the one. Okay, we didn't do 14. I don't think Right, because county road, we have some say over what gets cut. Really, V-Trans would... We don't over Route 14. Right, on Route 14. Right, so um, it was, what was interesting was, apparently, there were no, either none or a minimal amount on the east side. Oh, there are definitely trees over there. Ash trees. Ash trees. Ash trees on but the east side of town. Where is this? Just not as on many the east side of town. Not as many along the roads. East no, side no, no, no. is East Callis. East Basically Callis. east of uh, 14. Okay. Well, like Lightning Ridge, that area? No, no Lightning Ridge is this side. Yeah. The other yeah. side. Yeah. Max Gray. Oh, that's side. Right. East, right. east Hill. Hill. Loose Road. Yeah. Tucker. So there wasn't as many ash trees there. Isn't that interesting? Well, you know, I went around I went around to all the cemeteries with Randy, and you know there were no ash trees? They were maples. I was so happy they were maples. They wow. were ash trees that were providing all the beautiful shade around the um, cemeteries, for the most part. Um, so anyway, we are um, now in the process of developing a management plan. So we have this information. We have it. <laughs> We wanted to talk with you, and we wanted to, at some point, we'll have a public meeting, I believe, to solicit public input, but we've been talking about this a lot, and you know, there's not a lot of choice about what to do. Um, there's essentially three options, and these were um, kind of laid out by everybody. I mean, there's really just three options, and one of them they call preemptive management, and that is that you remove them all. Remove all the ash trees um, before they're on the, in the right of way. In the right of way. Yeah, we're only talking about public right of way. Right. Um, and if possible, or appropriate, replace some of them with different tree species. Um, that's that means that none of them, the public roadways, wouldn't have any ash trees now, and. Who knows where all that money would come from? Yeah, right. Um, exactly. So the that positive thing is, is that you don't have to then deal with dead ones because they're already cut. If they're cut now, you don't have to deal with them when they're dead. Right. right. But and it's kind of a horrifying thought. The kind of rule of thumb is that once they're infested, it costs twice as much to cut them down. So if you have a dangerous ash tree, it's a lot more expensive to do. Right, because right. you have to have a professional come in and. And a lot of the professionals, even the way they would normally cut it, they don't want to do, they don't want to climb a tree that the branches are going to break up mm -hmm. and Right, no, not really. Using bucket trucks. Yeah. Well, man, isn't there like, what, and then what can they do with it if they know it's infested? Right. What can they do with it? Right, I mean, does it change their op what their options are, just what to do with the wood? Um, not really. Kind of okay. our options are already restricted because it could because be ash. here even okay. if we don't see it because it's ash. But you can still burn it for firewood. Or yeah, as long as you're not moving it too far. Mm -hmm. Although we learned, uh, I was going to do this later, but I'll tell you now, we met with uh, an arborist, Nate Ebert, who has, in the last few years, moved. He lives in uh, on Coburn Road in Plainton. Mm -hmm. And Nate is from Minnesota, or he lived in Minnesota, where there was emerald ash borer infestation. So he's had a bunch of experience with it. Mm -hmm. And one of, we met with him at our last meeting. And one of the things he said is that if you've got trees that are not leaning into the road, you, he would say, don't, they're not going to fall on the road. Right. So they're not going to cause a hazard. So you don't have to cut them. That's one thing he said. Mm -hmm. Another thing he said, if they are leaning into the road, you can, uh, somebody who knows what he's doing can cut, cut them so they fall into the road. And then you cut them up in the road. You close the road, you cut them up. So it's not totally as dire and hideous as I made it sound. Mm -hmm. Because there are some of these other um, things that can be done that would, you know, make it a little bit not so horrible. 
And there, yeah, there is another option too. I, I, there were a number of dead trees south of our property, um, actually on Gail Graham's property, um, and they were, you know, dropping limbs and stuff. And so I just took my tractor and I took the bucket and I pushed them just so they leaned away from the road. So when they fell, they'd fall. And it didn't take me that long. It went up and down both sides of the road. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's the town highway crew doesn't necessarily have to cut the trees down. Plus, it's a monster where you're not going to do that. Well, we're going to talk about that. But um, they so could possibly push them to lean the other way. Do we know what percentage of the ash trees are considered hazard out of all Yeah, so six, something like 1,600 are Hazards out of the 3, are leaning toward the road, and our, our responsibility are so that you know some of them are in the utility right of ways, and that's kind of their problem. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think there are six. So we would right, so we would just care about the ones that were going to like fall in the road, right? Basically, those are right clearly a higher priority mm -hmm. than the other 1,400 that are not going to fall in the road or whatever. Do we know if the utility companies are? They're taking care of it. They are. Okay. Yeah, they are. They have their own plans. Um, so there are other negative things about cutting them all down now, uh, other than economic. I mean, you can imagine to go around all of a sudden the roads don't have any ash trees when well, they comprise that much of the yeah. uh, roadside canopies. Um, and also, it's been mentioned that. There could be developed an effective control. There could be. I mean, right now, apparently, there are insecticides that trees can be treated. Um, Montpelier is treating some trees. I think East Montpelier is treating some trees. Mm -hmm. There are trees that they feel are important. East Montpelier calls them historic trees. There, um, I think there's about 10 of them that they identified in East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. But in our inventory, we asked people when they did the inventories to note if there's like some kind of real special tree that stands out, and apparently there weren't any. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, now we may revisit that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I know of one. Um, so I talked to it's on Jan Bruss' property. I talked to her about it the other mm -hmm. day. Um, as being perhaps an important tree. One advantage, on one property. benefit. Of, that's well, on her property. On her she would property. have to take. But it's right on. The, I'm sorry. It's right in the right of way. Oh. Okay. But it's her property. But it's oh, okay. the right of way. No, it's right on the right of way. Um, but um, another benefit to um, having at least a few trees in your community that you save is that you'll then have a few ash trees. If they survive. That will then have baby ash trees. We hope. Um, so that you wouldn't completely wipe out all the ash in your community. We found out that you know, the costs vary to treat a tree. Apparently, they, what they do is they put a port in it, and then they, it has to be treated every other year for the whole rest of the life of the tree, mm -hmm. as long as you want that tree there. Mm -hmm. I heard it was expensive. Uh, what did we say about the cost? $15 an inch? Yeah, it ends up being a few hundred bucks a tree for right. a bigger tree every two every years, two years yeah. forever. Yeah, but you know, Montpelier, you know, Montpelier turns out has a lot of street ash trees. Yeah. Oh. And yeah, they're very concerned wow. about losing them. So, Shapers. you know, they're going to be treating some. They're going to be replanting. You know, they already have a replanting plan. Um, so that's. But I think you know our recommendation would not be to go down and cut every tree, ash tree. Right, right. I think that's what we would, what we talked about. Um, and then that was the, that was the first um, possibility management. Then another management is, as I just said, is to treat insect with insecticides. And then the other, another one is reactive management, where you remove the trees as you need to. Or you go out and identify now what are the really most hazardous. Uh -huh. We're not going to go out and, you know, don't have the means to go cut 1,500 trees or 1,000 trees. But, you know, you, we can do a more close identification of, uh -huh. you know, because as I said, you know, it was pretty, we didn't have a lot of nuances on that app. So if it was a ha if it was leaning in the road, it was a hazard sheet. But maybe it's leaning on a road that nobody ever travels on. Or, you know, mm -hmm. there may be other you know more specific criteria that can be done to go look at them and decide which ones really should be taken down sooner than later. Um, and that's and then just sort of let them, you know. And the other thing that Nate pointed out is if it's leaning away from the road, 
you know, it's, and it's not a, there's not a building there. It probably right. never will create a hazard. It will fall, right. the branches will right. fall. And I'm just going now. What hopes, not in the road, if it's right. really leaning away. And we, thought, we saw a bunch of those. I mean, there are a bunch, like below a bank, you know, still in the right of way, but below a bank and maybe in front of a field. Um, you know, um, so that all those ash trees are, are not necessarily have to be cut. Um, so, we're, anyway, we're working on this now, and sort of what we came up with was what I just said, you know, there aren't a lot of choices. And, but one of the things somebody mentioned, that somebody from the road crew, maybe it was Alfred, had said, well, we can cut some of the trees. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why I'm going to tell you to be here. It would definitely be the most cost-effective thing. But there's two issues. One is availability, and one is capability. So I don't know either. I have no answer for either. I don't know what their availability would be. I don't know what their capability is. Mm -hmm. But just kind of preemptively, I talked to Joanne Garten from the tree program and said, do you know of any training programs for road crews? And she sent me to David Birdsell, who lives in Middletown Springs, who runs these programs called uh, Game of Logging. Mm -hmm. Game oh, yeah. Logging. Okay. Yeah, and he he and his group, his program, they train road crews. It's one of the things they train road crews cool. on how to, in this special technique they've learned from some guy named Soren Erickson in the most safest way to take a tree down. And it's like a three day training program. Do they come right here and do it? Well, yeah, it would. You know, it's a little complicated, but you know, they'll take up to 10 people in, at once. They do their training programs, and they cost something like $1,250 a day. But what you do is you'd be the host, somebody's the host, and then you can invite other people to come, and then you can charge them. I mean, he said some organization is always making money by sponsoring it and then charging more than they're paying well, for it. Well, I'm thinking we could go in on it maybe with like East Mount Pillar yeah, exactly. or something. Yeah, exactly. But like what I, I want to talk to Toby because I haven't, and I really don't know. Did any of the crew ever go through this program? Um, I don't know that they have, Probably but no. um, you know, Alfie certainly has had a lot of experience in his lifetime taking roadside trees, and, which is far more valuable than doing a three-day game of logging. I mean, there's no way in three days of instruction, not that it's not valuable, but you can't become a logger in three days and be it's just you just can't do it yeah but what they're doing is they're teaching basic safety techniques I, mean, I that, appreciate that that's really what it is I mean I mean what is the choice to have them go out well I mean, no. I mean the choice is that the road I don't know that they would only be able to take down stuff that was within their capability right within the right. limits of what they feel like they've learned and I wonder if I think we would have to double check with our um, insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting what this guy told me, Bursal. He said he also runs a program for loggers. It's called LEAP. And he said if they go through, this existing loggers, if they go through this program, their workers' comp costs go down 15% automatically okay. because, mm -hmm. you know, a workers' comp is a right. huge burden on loggers. And, huge. This, and this, but this is such a good safety program that even workers' comp has recognized. Yeah. That's well, less this, likely to be. And it's not just specifically about cutting ash trees, it's just cutting trees no. in general. Cindy Gardner Moore sponsored one of these on their property just like two or three years ago. Oh, did you? No, it, was, it was last yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, it was last year? Yeah. Got it. Cindy Gardner Moore. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think it's from. something that we can definitely check into. So um, and Elfie's experience is that he knows that some big trees he's just not capable of and we hire Joe. Joe Bain. Joe Bain to do yeah. that. And that happens quite, not quite often, but really large trees. And he does have a bucket truck. Right. Well, well maybe he climbs trees. up like a monkey. No, he does. He also doesn't climb up dead ash trees, trees like a monkey. No, no. but no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're alive, but if he's you know, before right, we do the preemptive ones. I mean, it would be worth. I mean, if the, if the road crew were to take it on, this isn't something that happens this winter. It's like this is a several year project. So assuming there's some kind of turnover in the road crew over that time, it might yeah. be really valuable to think about trying to bring somebody on that has equipment experience, but also logging experience. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you go and you shut down a half mile section of road and uh, for a, a day or whatever it is, and you know somebody that can fell trees can bring down. You you have the other crew that's chipping and cutting limbs, mm -hmm. and 
you were down. You could do 50 trees in a day. I mean, yeah. take those most hazardous trees in a section. And so over time, a single yeah. person that was very experienced could could take care of the you know 500 of the 1500 that you've identified as being large hazardous definitely coming in the road you want to take them down when they're alive so i have a question so i want to just back up drew to what you said about game of logging not being a um, not being a substitute for logging experience and I want to make sure that we under, are understanding you clearly. I'm, I'm guessing, but I'm looking for your yes or no. I'm guessing you're not saying that a safety class is a bad idea. Um, in fact, I'm gonna, this is what I would say. If the guys are going to be cutting trees with a chainsaw, it's a good idea. Sure. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't put too much reliance on that as the training. On the other hand, don't have them running chainsaws cutting down trees without some safety am, am i yeah, am i hearing that's what i'm saying I, yeah. I mean i just feel like if this is a project if in the end the select board decides that this is something that the road crew is really going to take on and they're going to do all this cutting you know many hundreds of trees mm -hmm. that somebody that, 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 that a game of logging weekend is is maybe falls a little short of uh -huh. what they might need. Okay. But Alfie you. comes back and thank you know you. he yeah. does that then maybe that's well and the, and the other thing is that you have to understand that even with a crew of four we have a hard time staying up the road to well, yeah that's right. really important. So that the availability of right. time to take on this additional project you know, there may be some time in the fall when the roads are not, we're done our dirt work. There may be windows of opportunity there. Um, but, you know, all through the winter and spring and right into summer dirt season. So there's really probably only a month or two a year mm -hmm. that they could commit yeah. to that, that kind of. That may be priority. more than enough, you know, if that I means. If it's, uh, but it's no, I have two questions. I have two, I have a question and a thought. Sending the crew to a training. I, it might be really good for, for them, for their, not self-esteem, but the value that they can bring back to the town with what they learn. It's an investment. Uh, to send somebody to a training like that, it's an investment. And they might feel really good that we would take the time and, and the money to send them to that training, just thinking of it from a personnel kind of outlook. Second, how, I mean, if, how long would it take maybe to just go and identify the 100 or the 50 most hazard prone trees? How long would it take to, to do that so we would have an idea of how much crew time it was going to take to remove these 100 trees? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like the first step. That's right. I mean, I don't think it would take that long. Yeah. That would be an important question to answer before. So we taking our map and driving around. Right. Yeah. So, so you guys could go and do that. And you can identify them with a big orange X that we hopefully will flag. A flag. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, we get a lot of phone calls when people put orange Xs yeah. on trees. Um, that might be that might be the first start. We don't know if we can have the crew do it time wise because we don't know how many. So a first step might be to how many. So we can talk with Toby and Alfred about what time is there available to do this. I, my instinct is that it's going to be, that it's not going to be clear like, ah, oh, these are the 50, we're good, but that it's kind of more like, oh, yeah, we can find priorities, but, right. you know, uh, eight inch tree that's leaning over the road is not going to be a priority but it's still a hazard it's still really hurt you if it fell on you, mm -hmm. or you um, so there's kind of gradients you know so right because that might help us determine whether or not the crew really has time to do it the and if they're not and if they're not dead then it's no different than cutting any other tree that they do on the roadside in normal maintenance right because it's not a hazard yet because it's not dead and we're gonna fall apart well, sense. actually, yeah. there's an interesting it raises an interesting question because, as you know, the way the statute works, as far as taking trees down, if they're hazard trees, then they can be taken down. But 
um, if they are not hazard trees, there has to be a public hearing. If, if, that if they are ornamental shade trees. Wait a minute. That, wait a minute. It's not been interpreted. It's been interpreted differently by different towns. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way this town has interpreted, it, as well as other towns, is that public trees are all shade, all shade trees, because it hasn't been defined, and we don't have an ordinance. And that's what the case law says. A few towns have right. lost case, case, cases mm -hmm. in courts because they because said we, that, and the courts right. said. So, no, but we could okay. identify. Oh, right. Let me finish what I'm this okay. thought, so that. It, it, we understand, we've been told that, I believe, that unless it's actually infested, the tree can't be considered a hazard tree. So what right. East Montpelier is doing... Even the ash trees? Right, even ash trees, unless they're infested. So what East Montpelier is doing right now is they identified, you may have seen if you go up to U32, they identified a row of ash trees along Gallison Hill Road, and they've tagged them. They've been tagged for a while, and they want the public to see them. And then they're going to be taking them down. They had a hearing. They had to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And they had the hearing. And See, nobody objected, but they had a hearing. They notified the adjoiners. They followed that process, mm -hmm. and they had their hearing. So why wouldn't we do the same thing? Well, we would have to do the same thing. That's all I'm saying. We could, do it. we could identify those 50 trees and have one hearing. Right, that's it, right? Can we do the whole thing and, and have one be, hearing? They'd be ready to go for the next two right. years. Okay. Right. Right. That would make sense to me to do, to do that. Well, the other thing is, is that there are some towns anticipating having to spend a lot of money over some period of time are, are starting to set up funds. Yeah. So there, they're putting a certain amount of money away each year. Is there any grants available for one to, to do this? Is there any grants available to do the save these five trees and we're going to put ports in them and give them medicine? Is there any grants yeah, right now? Not that we know of right now. Hmm. Okay, not that you know of. Um, there is that $15,000 grant that you said. Yeah, there was, a, there was a grant that you had to match. Yeah, it was a, yeah, a $15,000 matching grant. We didn't, we didn't, we decided not to pursue it. East Montpelier is pursuing it. Yeah. Like four, three of them or something yeah. statewide. So, you know, and who knows? I mean, there may be grants in the future, but right now there's no grants to tree trees or cut them down. Um, so what do you want from the board tonight? Just kind of to give us an update, get our feedback, come up with a proposal. Can you guys come up with a proposal and you know, this, you know, well, it was helpful to learn the availability, right. which is not high, but right. it's possible for some of the year. I mean, maybe we're meeting on February 5th. Because I wonder if you could come up with like I said, the, the hundred, yeah. maybe hazard, well, maybe not even hazard trees, but the hundred trees that need to be cut as the first priority, as the first priority you know, and if they're not, like I said, if they're not dead, but then you know, we have to have a hearing, <clears throat> and then maybe there's a list of the hazard trees that could just be cut, and how many of them are there and where are they kind of thing. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. Yeah. How. It would be necessary to... Just wondering if you know somebody flags a bunch of ash trees in front of my yeah. driveway. If that's gonna make me wonder what the hell's going on. I, I mean, well, you heard we, what they're doing. They're doing it, and they're yeah, they but they're doing. The I just mean, but we're gonna be doing if we're doing it. The hazard trees, which are mm -hmm. all Another much more scattered. We're gonna have all this flagging yeah. around all if these it's, trees all if over the town. If repeats itself, there'll be a firestorm if you start marking trees. Well, well, they, yeah. they, they have, have to contact contact them, but they have to contact it. You're they the have to contact the, the landowners. Not to cut them. I mean, just to flag them. I think we could still contact them. They would still. We would still contact uh, the landowner. We, we would. We would. Yeah, or whoever's doing this. I mean, Larry and Julie and Neil, you've yeah. been doing the flagging trees. We haven't flagged them yet. Right. I know, but you have a plan. You yeah. might try. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. They're, you're talking about flagging it for like public. Yeah. I'm talking about going on and identifying. No, I understand what you're saying. I'm okay. saying we would, those would be. Yeah, but when we do that, we're not going to know which landowners have the hazard trees till we actually go out and mark them. And we're going to want to flag them when we identify them yes. right at that moment. Then what? I'm just wondering whether or not we want to somehow get the word out that. 
maybe we have the public can it make sense to have a pu the public hearing before we do that yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah before you start going around and flagging and stuff but and also we we'll coming up with, we'll we'll be coming up with a, but can't you be coming up with a plan how to do this project have the public informational meeting do some postings on front porch forum that kind of stuff I would sure. imagine that that if there's a public hearing process around taking down hazardous trees or non-hazardous trees whatever it well, is they're hazardous under, they're hazardous right. but they're not ha hazardous yeah it's two different meanings of either, right. either way if there's a if there's a, a, a hearing process set out in statute or for the regulations pursuant to statute I would expect that it says that people have to know which trees you're talking about so yes I, I don't know this for sure it would make sense to me do you know what I'm saying? So yes, let people know you're going to be out flagging trees if they flag them, if they see a flag on a tree on their property because Drew's right. Who's going to want to, you know, send them a note, go back, try to find that tree again? But that would all be before the actual public hearing about yeah. taking the tree down. Yeah. I don't think you could do a public hearing say. You know, over the next six months, we're going to be flagging trees and then taking them down. If you're, if you know, if, if you're worried, we might flag one of your trees. Come and speak. No, well, I think that's. I think that we're talking about a public informational meeting. Right. Information, but not the actual hearing. Right, right, yeah. right. Oh yeah, it's right. two separate things. The hearing is different than the public information right. meeting. Right, right. John. So you know, we're talking about flagging. That's what we've historically done. We, but this is a special kind of project. We could come up with some paper signs. <clears throat> Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they're waterproof somehow. And rather than flag a tree, we what stick the sign up, and the sign is all the information. This tree has been marked for the following reasons. If this is mm -hmm. your property, call this number. But we will be reaching out to property owners as well in the coming kind months. Of like a, kind of like a post. And so they know what that's the flag, that's the identifier. And then there's information that goes along with it. That's a great idea. Maybe, yeah, so maybe it's idea. Some, maybe we tie a ribbon around it, but there's like a little pendant that hangs down. And it's a little index card yeah. size information thing, so that you yeah, end up. You can do them almost like the you no know, trespassing or posting yeah. signs, right? They're working on yes. something right something now, on a slightly that. different thing. But what they're doing, and I'll let them explain it. The purpose is um, is to bring up some more public awareness. So they've identified areas three on three well-traveled road and cars, and they're going to be, go ahead, don't let her even explain them, or Neil or somebody. Yeah, doing it. Um, Neil, do you want to? Sure. Yeah, we were just, we we're ideas like um, East Montpelier did to find sections of road where there are ash and flag them and put up signs, mm -hmm. and not any intent to cut those trees, but just to like make people aware Right. Of what's gonna what's coming? Like, yeah. look at all these ash yeah. trees. It's gonna yeah. be a lot different. Yeah. They're not gonna be here in five years. Probably want to wait till the snow banks. Enjoy them while they last. Yeah, right. And we sent out a, a, public, no, a letter to all the landowners. Yeah, to each of those landowners. That's the letter there. And right. Um, yeah, each of the landowners has gotten a letter, so mm -hmm. they know what's going on. And it's, I think you're doing the same kind of thing with the, 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 a piece of information on the tree. They are, yeah, I already told them. It just went out. It already went out. No, it's fine. I just I got two pieces of mail from the town of Talis today, and now I know why. Mm. <laughs> I didn't open them. Are you on that list? I must be. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. no. You got two other letters. It's a lot of nice ash trees on Tucker Road, though. But not a lot of traffic. Why. Especially towards Lightning Ridge. So yeah, it was I, what? I did that. Yeah, there are three three okay. areas. Okay. You, you like Lightning Ridge. Road I don't open mail. Headman <laughs> Road to Pat Johnson's. Did I get one? That is. Yeah. You're on the list. Um, I'll look for it. North Callis Road from just right up here to Duggarbrook. And then West County Road from uh, just above where the Nasals property is. Mm -hmm. Actually starts with uh, Judy Copa and Eric mm -hmm. Goldberg down to, what is it, Neil? How far down? Down to, Rand not, down to North Curtis Pond Road. Hmm. Is the maximum area. We, really? You know, we could, you know, we don't, it was just for demonstration purposes, so hmm. we don't have to do the whole thing, but we were looking for areas that were well high traffic that, yeah. that had oh, enough yes. of, a, of, a, of a collection of ash trees that, you know, it would make an impact if you saw them with like green ribbons around them. Right. 
And we also, um, as I said in the email I sent to, to you guys. Yeah, and I forwarded it to that, the board. That uh, we were trying to, we tried to find a place in East Cows on the other side of 14, but we looked and we looked and we looked. We couldn't find any place that had the kind of collection of ash trees similar to the ones in the other three places we found. Lucky them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, as I said, we still have some grant money, but mm -hmm. we have to use it up by the end of March. So maybe we could use that so, to make some posters. Oh, well, we were talking about that and also um, um, planting, maybe doing a little planting. The planting new trees doesn't have to be to replace ash trees. We could do planting in public places. Before end of March. When, so money has to be used up before the end of March. Because I wonder. Buy trees. We can buy them. So we can't use that spring. money to use it on a training. Yeah, we could do that, road. except that we have to do it by the end of March. And there's no way to get an extension? <coughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. There's no extension on this grant. No. Oh. We have to use the money. So, hmm. I don't know. I, I just have this idea. But that, because I, I was up at the East Hill Tree Farm this fall. Um, with Nico, and he's got some chestnut trees up there. We bought some of those up there. You got chestnut trees? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, wouldn't that be fabulous to have like a couple of chestnut trees out here or, you know, in some mm -hmm. public so places? Replace our disease disease trees with another disease tree. Mm -hmm. Oh, are they? These no, are, he's got some hybrids. He's got some hybrids that, yeah, are, that are healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So could we? So we could buy the we could buy the um, trees in March. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea is to buy the trees before the end of March. Yeah. But also, I was talking to you a few weeks ago or last week about it. You were saying we should have more handouts at town meeting. Yeah, we should again. Yeah. So you know, we'll use we'll have to use some money for printing costs again. We're not going to send them out to everybody. Right, and it's time. a picture, you know, to show like. If, this is what the inside guts of the tree will yeah. look like when the borer takes over and why it kills it. You know, I didn't know it was because it didn't get water. I didn't know why it did. So, right. so, so in other areas of the country that have already experienced the, the infestation of the, the emerald ash borer, have they seen these bugs jump tree species once they run out of that? We supply other ash trees. Have you heard that? Other, yeah. ash, other ash trees. Nothing. So they, they like one day like a black ash, and then they'll go to a different ash. There's, I guess the 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 worst are the brown and black, right? And then there's a small amount of re resistance in the white and green. Isn't that right? Yeah. But but and there are so many different kinds of ash trees. Essentially, 100 percent of the ash trees are going to die. So, okay, so they're not jumping to maples or oaks. So or can they take some seedlings from a place that doesn't have this, well, they, this and put them in some vault cry, somewhere? Cryo, so save, save them somewhere? somewhere? Yeah. yeah, we have there. There's like the seeds are protected. The seed. There will still be ash. The seed hideout. Two hundred years. They have seed banks. Seed banks. Right. Hmm. Plus, who knows what's going on on people's private properties? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. You right. Know. There'll be some. There'll be some. There'll be yeah. Some. Yeah. I'm mean, there'll, there'll be some. And mm -hmm. also, what Nate said is, he said, you know, you can chip them, and you can move them once you chip them. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, he even suggested having a processing, a community processing oh, area with a chipper. You know, and people cut their ash or the well, whoever. Why is chipping them? He said it kills. He said it kills the larva and the beetles. It, makes, it, it cuts them into small enough pieces that the wood dries out and the beetles can't live in the wood anymore. Because they need so that moisture. It doesn't necessarily kill the beetles, but they leave. Oh. And then when you transport the chips, you know that hmm. there aren't beetles in that wood chip because it's just not a place they hmm. could. Survive. How long do the chips have to sit before they leave? Is my question. I don't know. Is that, you know, I, I'm chipping that on my property, they run the toll tree right through it, wah, and then that truck's out of there heading to... I don't know, but this, you know, the state, the state did all their regulatory stuff and put together guidelines and stuff, and, and they were, they said that that's fine, like, yeah, chip plants all over the state are getting chips from wherever, and as long as they're chipped. A chipper is something that arborists too strongly recommended if the road crew were to tackle yeah, we're, we're all going to get one. Yeah, wait, anyway, there's right? a warrant. Uh, there's going to be an item on the warning. Years ago, we've been talking about getting the chip. Yeah, we're doing right. it this year. We're yeah. doing yeah. it again. Okay. It's no, on the this, warning. That's it's definitely on the warning. fodder yeah. for Well, when, we, for that. when that article comes up on the floor, I mean, this is a perfect example of why it would be important to support 
to purchase. He, he described it, and it makes sense that it would make that job immensely more mm -hmm. efficient to have a chipper. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. If somebody would make a note when it comes up, right? The the emerald ash borer issue is a new one. For to support the chipper. Yeah, I mean, what's a chipper cost? Fifteen thousand no, dollars. No, no, not no. for an industrial. I'm looking at a used at used ones that are like twenty five to okay. thirty. Still, it would pay itself off fast when you yeah. think how much it yeah. you know. So costs I hate to, to cut this. Risk. I hate to cut this short, but we have CBRPC people waiting to talk to us as well. Okay. Well, what we'll do is um two things. We'll come up with some, I guess, a proposal to give you, mm -hmm. and then also we have to develop another. <laughs> handout for town, for, the, for town meeting and these are all good ideas to have yeah. things to put in it and I, another thing it's not something you need but it has to do with landowners and what can they do they can sell their trees to lumber oh. to lumber yards right what can private landowners do with their can actions? you maybe yeah, talk all. about that at your meeting yeah Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Great Thanks. information. Good to see you all. Yeah. Appreciate your work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for counting the trees. Three. How many trees? Three thousand two hundred and ninety-seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the ones we found. We didn't do every single road. We didn't do all the roads. We did sixty-six. There's more. Is it there was ninety? There are more. Now we're gonna do the maples just for the board. Yeah, we have this little app. This cute little. Are you here for CBRPC? Well, I totally support CBRPC, but I was interested in the next item of the LCT discussion. Okay. Oh, okay. So is that something you were going to be discussing? No, 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 no. Actually, no. You left me a message today. Are you in? Yeah. Are you in? Yeah. Okay, I got your message. Didn't have a chance to call you back. So, quick question: Will it be on the agenda still? Are you still going to discuss that? It is it's sort of there as a reminder because oh. we were we had some. Would it be good to hear from you? Yeah. So but, here. well, but I'm I'm not Gwen Zakoff from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. No, Council you are. Was. No, but that doesn't say anything. Do you want to fill for her and do that too? I'm an, I mean, that's not her name isn't on the agenda for anything. Okay. No, so, she she might have been the drafter. She might have been. I don't really know who was the drafter, but so. I'll stay. Okay. Yeah. So we want to hear from CBRPC. Does everybody? Grace is new. To us. I am new. Hi everyone. I'm Grace. I'm a new planner at CBRPC. I Welcome. started in November. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Denise Wheeler. Nice to meet you. Cliff Evans. Nice to meet you. Rose Palchuk. I'm Katie. I'm the reporting secretary. Sharon Wynn Fannin. John Braven and I'm your commissioner. Great. Okay. Thank you. And everybody knows Bonnie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do they remember me? Route 14 discussion, but yeah. that's kind of in the back. No, we remember you. You're hard to forget. You guys do well. <laughs> I'm not sure I... Mm -hmm. oh, I have to think about that one. Send me an email. I have to think about that one. Okay. Um, so, so this is the Route 14. Uh, no, this is not Route 14. This is the Root hazard mitigation plan that is up for renewal and expires in July of 2020? Yes. So we got to get on it. Yes. And in spring of 2018, Alice agreed to participate in a grant that we sought from FEMA to do the local hazard mitigation plan. That grant was awarded. It is making it finally made its way through the contracting process at FEMA and the state, and now we have a contract to begin. So we are on your doorstep, making sure you're still interested in mm -hmm. updating your local hazard mitigation plan. There are a lot of reasons to update that. I will tell you that the main ones communities do is that when there's a federally declared disaster, mm -hmm. having a local hazard mitigation plan is one of four things you can do to increase the amount of the state share of your disaster damages. Yeah. I forget how much that was. I know I read it in something. It depends on where you are. If you have done none of those things, if you have not done all four, um, 
the state All share four. is seven and a half. So hazard mitigation plan, mm -hmm. local emergency yeah. management plan, yeah, which we have. Um, NFIP participation, flood hazard regulations, and road ordinances, and you have those. Do we have the flood one? You do. You guys have floodplain regulations, It's in right? zoning. Yeah, it's yeah. in your zone. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when you have all four of those, your state share can increase to 12.5%. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, if you adopt a river corridor, river corridor, corridor yes, uh, you can get, it'll move up to 17 and a half. Yeah, I know the Planning Commission is working on river corridors. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, several communities, and I did not check whether you were one, adopted interim. It's probably been think five or seven years ago. There were oh, nine central Vermont towns that did. It might have, but I don't remember okay. that. So when your, local, happen. when your local hazard mitigation plan expires, you will drop down to the five, um, seven and a half percent mm -hmm. state share. And who do, I mean, are you, you folks are the ones that are going to develop the plan and present it? We will be, I describe it as, we will be your typist. We'll do all your background research writing. You are the decision makers. It's your plan. Right. So when we're talking about the grant and it says, you know, we, there's a match and the match can be money or in kind, does your time count? My time doesn't. Grace's time doesn't because we're funded through the grant. Okay. But if you, most communities do a planning team. Mm -hmm. So when the select board discusses this tonight, the mm -hmm. 15 minutes you spend on it counts as match. Okay. Um, when you, how uh, much match do we have to have? Twenty five hundred dollars is what you committed to. Mm -hmm. Generally, we found that that is doable for most communities. So when you talk about the select board time, is that how much per hour? Twenty as volunteers, twenty dollars per hour per unless, person. Yes. Okay. Unless you'd like to charge the actual rate the town pays you for that. <laughs> but I consider the volunteer zero, zero yes. or point five. Exactly. Oh. And I, I assume like the road crew would be involved in yes. some of this so we can match yes. Toby's and, time and... And Toby's time as road crew can be actual cost. So if... Me, no, let me restate that. His wages, mm -hmm. if you document on town letterhead the, uh, the actual wage rate, mm -hmm. you can use that for his. And That's so not going to go far either, Toby. Mm -hmm. But it, you'd be surprised how quickly it adds. For twenty five hundred dollars, it adds up quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We tried to take and look at what do communities well, we generally made it, average. Well, we, we did okay the last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no issue. Who is the planning committee? I think. Well, that's what we have to decide. Right. Okay. So we don't have. It's not like oh, it's this group or it's that. No, group. we can. It's okay. not Okay. Right. Um, what was I just going to say now? I can't remember. So just um, understand that the existing five-year plan literally has covered everything that they're going to put in. It. There's not really any new wrinkles. The only or, new wrinkle is that um, the requirements for the plan have not changed from FEMA. What they'd like to see in the plan to meet those requirements is an ever-changing yeah, strengthens every year. And you know what those are, so yeah. you can. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what do you do the record keeping of the in kind? We time? ask on the back of the memorandum of agreement with this lovely form. Mm -hmm. You need to record when you did things, mm -hmm. and then if you give us these sheets, we will do the full tally for so you. So like the. Select board, right? When we have a meeting and we talk about this, we can make a note. Mm -hmm. Or when this committee, whoever they are, meets, or when Toby does when something or the road done. crew. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think in the past it's just been the road commissioner and my and the yeah, don't select board member and your your people. Okay. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. So. Every town does it differently. <laughs> in Washington, they selected three people who serve in each in three different positions, so they have nine. Po Nine voices at the table in the form of three bodies. In Montpelier, obviously, it'll be public works, planning um, department. It's a little more involved more. there. Right. Um, and Grace brought tonight just a, a brief sheet. We jog people's memory about who you could invite, mm -hmm. but it's also who's actually needs to be in on the example. plan mm -hmm. and who is more of a stakeholder that you either send the plan to for mm -hmm. comments. For instance, some towns, if there's a project proposed uh, near a private property, 
they sometimes choose to send the plan with a quick note to a property owner and mm -hmm. say, by the way, we're proposing a property or a project next to you in case you have right. any thoughts. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean I think we would want to do a good job of communicating with people if it's gonna affect something on their property, even if it's in the town's right of way. We want to make sure that people understand what's going on just like you heard about with the ash trees. Right. You know, we want we don't want and that's actually an example of something that can be incorporated if you've done an ash tree inventory, which Calus has. Mm -hmm. That inventory can be incorporated in any management decisions you make. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about those ash trees, unless you cut them all, and I'm not advocating that, um, once they're infested, they become more brittle. Mm -hmm. uh, folks probably told you that. Um, then that storm comes along and takes them all down. So the thing with emerald ash borer is you end up with much more debris. The tree that fell beforehand would come down and maybe grow. When an infested emerald ash borer tree comes down, it shatters into pieces. Mm -hmm. So the way the department talks about it, the Department of Forest Parks and Rec, is that it used to be that when you took a tree down, 80% of the cost was cutting the tree down and 20% was the cleanup of all the debris. Once a tree is infested with emerald ash borer, that equation shifts. Mm -hmm. And what used to be 20% now becomes 80% of the cost because you've got so many pieces, pieces to pick up. Mm -hmm. So some towns are choosing to build that into their hazard mitigation plan and recognizing it as a hazard. That's a good idea. Oh, but the trees that are any cheaper to cut down. The trees, no, actually. No, but if, we had, but if we had exactly. a big storm and that was written into the plan, for the cleanup, we might be able to get some reimbursement. I mean, debris cleanup is always yeah, is always eligible. Okay. Yeah, we had a so, winter storm, and we spent two days cleaning up, and I think we got nine thousand dollars. Right. So if we had a big storm and it downed a lot of ash trees that hadn't been identified as hazard, but came down. I'm just trying to think if there was some way to get some money to do this training and right. Can, so, you, can you leave that? Yes. Yeah. FEMA has not quite recognized it as a hazard yet. That's one of the reasons we're talking to towns about mm -hmm. putting it in. The Department of Forest Parks and Rec and VEM have talked to FEMA and said, look, we can see this big bill mm -hmm. coming. Yeah. And FEMA said, that's great, but when you're talking about many of their grants, you have to show a record of repetitive damage. Your trees haven't come down yet. You can show debris damage, mm -hmm. but not specific to this issue. And so, right, and so if you identify it as an opportunity to have it so that they're not paying for damage after the event, but helping to fund things before something happens. I think they'll have to see happen. an ash tree disaster and then realize that that's something they need to have a mitigation plan to take care of ahead of it the next time. I mean, they're always behind the Correct. disaster. Right. And that's, so that's why we suggest you build it into right. your plan. The grant might not be there today. So you'll build that in. Mm -hmm. Are you? Yeah. But yes. Yes. Our typist we have build, your yes. Our typist yes. will typist build that, will we'll, build that in. We'll fill that in. And then the other, we usually build that in under invasive species. Mm -hmm. So some communities have identified invasive species from an agricultural <laughs> perspective, mm -hmm. chervil, things like that. Well, um, we're, we're really big oh. into that now too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can, we're loaded with that. Yeah. Good for chervil you. and Real wild, good. wild parsnip and yep. we got a whole big education on that. There we go. Peter Harvey should be on this committee. <laughs> We're just going to evacuate the whole bloody town get out of here and leave it to nature. Just light so, it on fire and walk away. Just like so does anybody else have any <laughs> comments or questions? What do you need from us first? We have first two, two first steps. We were hoping that if you had any comments on the MOA, we could uh, talk about those tonight. If not, we're hoping you will choose to authorize someone to sign it. Um, and then the second one is not necessarily for tonight, but we need a planning team to work with. Okay, that's something we can do at a future meeting. Right. But what's the deadline? Your deadline is when your plan expires. I mean, if Which the plan- July. So, I, mean, I guess when will you have something to us 
to, to look at that we need this committee to review prior so, to July 20th, and then the select board, I assume, has to right. sign but, off on the plan. So two things. We need a committee to work with to do our work. Right, but... So yeah. usually our next step after we leave here, we're all good, you give us a planning team, is to meet with that planning team. Okay. Kind of run through process steps, what they can do, what we can okay. do. Um, to the extent possible, so we have developed, I'll call it a template for hazard mitigation plans. Um, we know that FEMA will approve it mm -hmm. in that form, given the level of information that's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace will go off and research your disaster history, background data, yeah. but the planning team needs to do a number of things. And so we generally meet with them so they can start work and they can meet with adults. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tonight we need to sign the, the form. I'm one of the board members. Are you in favor of having this project um, have our help with, their help with us with this, it's revising our hazard mitigation plan. And I looked at our old one and it's, yeah, you probably didn't. I don't know what you had before. We have started um, when there's match involved. Mm -hmm. We've we've started doing s some agreements with towns mm -hmm. because a few towns have not met their match, and right. we're we're on the hook for that match. So does this anticipate that we all sign, or just that one of us sign? Just one of you. Okay, so yeah. all right, I make the motion that uh, we authorize Denise to approve the MO. A with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission related to our updating our local hazard mitigation plan. Is there a second? Second. All right, is there any further discussion, comments, questions? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Um, so you will contribute seven thousand four hundred seven seven. Um, yes. Our share is the twenty five hundred, which is the in cash or in kind. Right. <clears throat> I already asked you about that, and we've met that criteria before mm -hmm. through so, the planning process. Yes, through the planning process, you should be able to. Be yeah. Done. Okay. Assuming you're so twenty dollars an hour per. Per, Twenty dollars per volunteer. I put in ten hours. Holy <laughs> crap! That'll be like done in a. You're going to tell us what you've done on past projects. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it if you scroll to the next page. Hours. Scroll to the next page. It it talks about what do you do? You form a planning team. Mm -hmm. Public engagement actions can be a number of things. Some towns use town meeting poster at town meeting, tell us what you've experienced. Mm -hmm. We have some set things, or your planning team could choose to do other things. Some, some kind of an outreach thing, like maybe a public informational meeting. It's not, cause it's not, it's not something that the townspeople have to vote on. Right. So different types of engagement mm -hmm. things that towns have used. Some towns have surveyed their residents and said, um, this is a list of hazards that affect us, winter storm, wind storms, rain, flooding. Which of these do you think is most important for so us we could to do like a, So we could do a survey. You could do a survey. You can do a poster where people vote with rocks. You can, there's a, a few things so that. Yeah, we have materials we can send you. Okay, that was my next So that's what we talked to the planning team. Yeah. So that's what you would talk to the planning team yeah. about how to make Get some public How to outreach. do that, right. right. There are a couple of places along the plan that make sense mm -hmm. for public outreach. Yeah. The other kinds of things, providing plans, studies, damage documentation, all those wonderful things that you know about that we don't. Mm -hmm. What does Callis have? When we talk to the planning team, what do you look for? Your town plan, um, any kind of road-related documents. Did you guys participate in the, what was the one, Joanne Garden? Yeah, yeah we did. Roadside. Yeah, we did that. Mm -hmm. You did that. Yeah, yeah. So whether there was anything in there that needed to, that could be incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you could, so you would contact. You would tell us, these things exist. Right. We already know that one. And we take right. a look at that and see yeah, if there's okay. anything that would make sense. I mean, we're usually pretty on top of stuff. Okay. Ahead of the curve on things. Yes. Yeah. The updating the text for the community profile, that text usually comes right out of your town plan. So usually one of the volunteers will pull that over. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, there is, in the last plan, you had a plan of action. So one of the volunteers takes that and says, 
um, here's the status, completed, no longer a priority, uh, and in know, progress. And when there is an event, oftentimes I'll get a call from somebody at CVRP even on a Saturday afternoon. Did you, I mean, I, that's, you guys are the best. Um, saying, did you experience any damage? Is that something that gets assessed by this hazard mitigation plan? I know it's the LEO, is, L, is it still LEOP? Is there, is there a new? It's now LEMP. LEMP. For yeah. a couple of years. So what we do, what Grace will do, is she will look up the disasters online, hopefully that either affected Callis mm -hmm. or at least affected Washington County, if it was right. countywide. But we'll also ask you what kind of documentation you have of past damages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, I think we have pretty good records of that. Roads, things like that. Because anything that we've had to account for and get reimbursed or ask for reimbursement, I think Alfred or Toby has kept a, a list. Right, and even if it's not a FEMA level event, mm -hmm. you know, if it's something that happened locally, only Callis got hit with. It. Like when the Adamant Dam Like broke. when the Adamant Dam broke, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> something like that. Some of those uh, winds started being had a few years ago. Right. 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 Right, where there was like one section of town that got annihilated, like yeah. my road. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is an evaluation <coughs> process for plan maintenance, which sounds very formal. Yeah, what does that mean? It just means how are you going to update it along the way or next time if you want to make changes. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to have a select board meeting? Some communities said once a year we're going to look at it and see if our list of projects changed. Mm -hmm. um, so again, pretty standard language. We talked to you yeah. about what makes sense for Callis. Um, and then they would also like to see this plan incorporated into other plans. So the next time you update the municipal plan, this plan you has a lot of plan? Yeah, Sorry, town plan. Okay. You say so town incorporated plan. by reference? Or? You can incorporate by reference, but you know how your town plan has a flood resilience section? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? This plan, this hazard mitigation plan talks about flooding. You want to make sure that the two speak, speak to each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, one's always a little bit ahead of the other one. Right, right. So. And then hold a required public hearing. FEMA doesn't actually require that anymore, but we leave that in there in case they change their mind. Okay. It just comes to so the we select just, board so we just and you adopt it at a meeting. The select board meeting, public right. wants to come and ask questions or look at the doc. I mean, that's, yeah, it's that's all we simple. really have to do. So it's pretty simple. Right. By the okay. time you get to adoption, it's already been to the select board once or twice. Right. Right. So. Yeah, because I mean, the select board will want to get updated from, you know, the status to make sure we meet the, the deadline and meet the, the goals of this, especially the in kind. So when you talk about deadline, I'm guessing you mean your deadline of um, when your plan expires. Right. So the way we work this is it usually, most communities take a year to 18 months oh. to update the plan. That's why we applied two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, We've been doing them in six months to a year. We've done them as fast as six weeks when towns are about to lose a FEMA grant. They have to keep their plan active. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to not do it in six weeks solely because we have to take somebody off all other work to do that. So how are you going to do our So what we do here is we set up a schedule with your planning team for what seems realistic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for the planning team it takes them a little longer to do their pieces. And then what we do in this agreement is it also says if you have one of those disasters where you need this and your plan has expired, when FEMA um, when the state puts in for a disaster declaration, if we really think FEMA's going to grant it, mm -hmm. we kick into action even faster. Then we do put things aside. Mm -hmm. So that when FEMA declares a disaster, you have 30 days to get your plan into the EM, not even adopted, just to Vermont Emergency Management. Ah. And so we do what we need at that point to get it into the EM so that you're qualify for those. Who is our contact person at CDRP for this project? Grace. Grace. Okay. That would be why she's with you. That's why she's yeah. with me, yeah. although I'm doing that. <laughs> this is her oh. first time on the MOU front. Oh. So, but she's working with you guys and Montpelier. You're both in the same grant, but you're each providing your own match. 
East Montpelier and those guys are no Montpelier. East Montpelier's plan got adopted last month. Mm -hmm. oh, they are done. And so we're working right now with Moortown, mm -hmm. Williamstown, and they're both just about to plan adoption. Mm -hmm. another month. So how, how long do you think realistically it will take you to take us to do this? Do you think we'll meet the July deadline? Where are we at? February? Yeah. I think you might be able to, but if not, August, September. And then, it, and, and, it really and, depends on how quickly. Right. And July comes and goes, and we have a big storm, and something happens. We make we, it We happen. make it. We do that 30 days. Mm -hmm. Hurry up and do it in 30 days. Right. Right? Right. And okay. it is doable. And it, especially by the time we get to July. Right. Like I said, we've done it in six weeks before, but understand mm -hmm. that what that six weeks took from start to finish was a dedicated the, employee to that project was a dedicated employee and on the town's behalf woodbury was meeting every week mm -hmm. their planning team was meeting every week to get it done okay so, so i think we probably want to put on a future like maybe the next select board meeting to look at this list and come up with a team because we'll have to ask people if they're interested okay um and Probably, maybe you know, like five people seems yep. like a manageable amount of people when you're trying to schedule meetings and. Yeah, I mean, take a look at the list and say yeah. who from Palace really needs to be in on crafting it versus who might look at it after, after the fact. Okay, because I can s scan and. Do you have this in something, a version that you can send to me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so I can send it around to yep. the board so everybody can think about who might be the people to serve on this. All right. Any other Sorry. thoughts, comments, questions? Anything? Hard you want me to sign that now? So did we now or send it to we? Oh, yeah, we hold it on the yeah. motion. Yeah. All right. And then you can just. Yep, and we'll send, we'll send, send a back page back. for people to keep. We'll send that to you digitally as well. Yeah. So there's a motion on the table, but y'all didn't. Yeah, we did we vote on it. I thought no, we did. There's a motion. Oh, a motion. Oh, we've been, 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 been going on. on. Sorry. Yeah, but I remember you All said. All those in favor? No, I, I thought I did. Yeah, she did say it. I did say it. Yeah, because I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. I just voted again. I was thinking the same thing as Kate. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> no. It must have been noisy. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, Cliff seconded it, and yeah, I Denise said that. further discussion, and we said and no. And then I thought this was the first. This no, this it doesn't matter. It's all fine. <laughs> Voted on twice. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, ladies. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, did someone write down five, six okay. people? Fifteen <laughs> minutes. Oh, yeah, we get to tell no, this. Somebody's going to be the bookkeeper. Katie, so I'll the board it. noted that counting Toby, who yes. sat through the whole thing, we had one, two, three, so four, six five. Six people. Uh, five volunteers. No, six. Well, well, Toby, paid well staff. Toby's paid staff, but six uh, but, but $20 an hour is probably good for, yeah. So how long do we six. talk about this? An hour and a half. No, <laughs> but at least no cheating. No, at you least half an hour. I just can't count. I would say a half hour to forty minutes. Half. So that's great. You do first. There you go. Meet, meet and greet with Callis. Right. Yeah. All right. I don't know everybody else. I need to stand up. Go ahead. All right. I think we're. I, uh, I think we're. we're all right. So we okay. want to talk about cannabis resolution. You can stand up and while we yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. So join us. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to call you back. It was a That's crazy okay. day. A crazy day. I understand. Okay. Okay. Just sort of last minute, too, because I saw this on the agenda on the front porch forum. So. Oh, are you, yeah. you live in Dallas? I don't. Oh. Um, I'm not you right. I am. So um, I'm Ann Gilbert, and I live in East Montpelier, but um, I work in Montpelier. I'm with Central Vermont New Directions Coalition. Yes, I got it written down here. Been here before. Yeah, yeah, I've got it written down here to call you tomorrow. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> well, here I am. Good to see you. Um, so New Directions is um, uh, a substance use prevention coalition, mm -hmm. uh, and we cover all of Washington County. And so I'm very interested in, you know, the discussions that um, Vermont League of Cities and Towns are having with individual towns um, because it's an opportunity for 
municipalities to really gain local control when it comes to the commercialization of cannabis, mm -hmm. um, which is coming down the road. Um, so I thought maybe somebody from the LCT would be here to talk about this with you, or I just sort of wanted to know whether you've already started a discussion yeah, about this. We had right. We had this on the agenda several times, uh -huh. um, and we talked. We did talk about it at one meeting, and Katie can probably find the minutes and get them to you. Uh -huh. um, and we decided we needed to think about it more. Uh -huh. We wanted to make some changes to the resolution. Uh -huh. We didn't necessarily agree totally with what the LCT put out. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> so that was our yeah. next step. Uh -huh. well, one concern is that by our the way it was written, we don't want it. To kind of agreement that it should be legalized at all for retail uh -huh. commercial sale, uh -huh. and so that was a concern that we amend the language to make that point clear. Uh huh. Um, okay. So. so yeah, so it's been it's just taken a while. So it's been on the agenda in the last two or three meetings. I know they're talking about pushing it through this session. Well, so that's another reason why I'm here is mm -hmm. because it just seems like it's on a, a fast track and it, it would be good for a lot of towns maybe to, you know, have the, you know, to sign the resolution supporting what, you know, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns have all, has already proposed. So is your Vermont Coalition Central, Central Vermont, Vermont New Directions, directions are you in favor of the resolution? Given that it really supports um, uh, public health and the current situation that we have right now um, and based on lessons learned from other states uh, we think that that's this is probably the best way to go right what now. Is the resolution doesn't say it should be legalized. It's saying if you do, right. we want to be able to regulate it. Right. And Basically, give us the authority. You know, give you the authority. And to be able to opt in, as opposed right. to the way it's written right now, which is, okay, this is the way it's going to be for everybody unless you get it together to then right. opt out. So uh, the to opt in. together. Well, to make a decision about what your town really they wants to do. They can't come and set up an establishment here unless we right. opt in to allow for it. Right, uh, as opposed to opt out. But they would have to have a license to No, but, state, but right? then, right, let's listen to that. So instead of automatically yes, having it in place, in mm -hmm. you know, throughout the whole state, Callis would be saying, well, no, not we're, that will not be the case until we actually decide to opt in. And um, but I'm, I guess I'm not opting into what? To allow the sale commercial in and retail and retail in sale in Callis. Okay, but I thought right. there was legislation. The legislation is, well, we don't know what it's going to say, but the concern is that they would just say it's legal for sale everywhere in Vermont. Okay. And then we're obligated to issue a license because it's just like selling Coca-Cola or liquor or liquor or yeah. Okay. I wasn't I didn't have and that. And we decide we don't want to allow that if we want to be a, a dry tap for the purposes mm -hmm. of this this drug, then we can do that. We can do that. Okay, so okay, I get it now. I just yeah. wasn't clear on that background. Yeah. How it would work if we didn't do this. Well, we don't know, and this is also to help them shape the legislation to make sure that that happens. It is. Right. Okay. Right. And um, from what I've read today and just doing a little bit of fact finding, East Montpelier um, signed this recently in December. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stowe, Williston, Brattleboro, Richmond, Pittsburgh, Springfield, Topsom. So a lot of a lot of towns mm -hmm. have and cities yeah. have considered yeah. this and are going this yeah, route. Yeah, I saw it on East Montpelier's Slack Board agenda. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What is your role yeah. at this coalition? What is your? So I'm the director. Oh, okay. Uh, this organization has been around for over 20 years. I've heard of it. You yeah. have. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we're we used to have more federal. Uh, grant funding, mostly state funding now. Mm. Right now there are 12 regions in the state of Vermont which have funding to really promote healthy communities and address substance use. Mm. And we know that the availability, the familiarity, the commercialization of you know alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, mm -hmm. um, and the decreased perception of harm are all what are driving 
our youth uh, to have really high numbers of usage compared to the whole country. Mm -hmm. Our 18 to 25 year olds are at the top of the list in terms of marijuana and cocaine use. Wow. And um, so. Cocaine's back, huh? Yes. Our Vermont. Yes. That's the hour. Huh. So we're. Um, so this would be one way to, you know, help support putting some um, guidelines in place and giving that local control. Mm -hmm. are, you, are, you, yeah. are you guys also working to try to prevent this legislation from passing? Well, we, were, we have been concerned over the past number of years. We've looked closely at what Oregon, um, Washington State, and Colorado have done, and um, you know it looks like this is on a fast track. Um, that it, it, it's not something that I think would be difficult to really be fighting it right now, but we can help shape it how it's going to work best for each town. Right, better to have a voice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because, given our current situation, which is that it's already legalized, so we've all there's there's already that step. Um, but the yeah, commercialization totally is a big one. Yeah. And in our organization, we've looked at the big tobacco organizations, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, industry yeah. targeting youth. They have really strong lobbyists. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of money, and it's cost a lot of a lot Same of harm. Vaping and the vaping. And so that's a whole nother component of the marijuana legalization mm -hmm. is it's not just growing a crop and having a baggie full of weed that, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's it's vaping the high potency THC. Mm -hmm. And what we know right now with this, uh, the recent um, lung injuries, mm -hmm. it's mostly been caused by the uh, THC, THC yeah, pods in a vaping device. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's because of the, they think it's because of, they put vitamin E in it for some reason. Vitamin E, yeah, there's a way to add to it. Yeah. Effect. Yeah. And right. So, so just so you know, my, my mm -hmm. outside of the, mm -hmm. the youth implications and public mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. implications generally, my, my concern is that this is seen as a cash cow. Yeah. And that what they always do, like they do with tobacco, they then develop, they, this creates this tax, through taxation, they create this pot of money. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to put it in the subsidized motor vehicle or paving of roads. They're going to say, well, where would this best fit? Mm -hmm. And they'll put it into the Agency of Human Services, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. And then that agency's funding mm -hmm. or the availability of funds increases. So then the legislature, which always struggles to fund AHS, mm -hmm. will say, well, we're, we're, we're good here. Mm -hmm. We can defund them mm -hmm. and we can give them less general fund money and wherever else they used to source funds. Mm -hmm. And they become, they become addicted to this funding source. So then if and when this becomes a problem or when the lobbyists say we need more, mm -hmm. We need to do more. We need to do more to expand our business. We are now hooked, mm -hmm. and there's this powerful lobby in the halls of this state house, which mm -hmm. does not need another powerful lobby. Mm -hmm. They can barely function mm -hmm. right now on mm -hmm. pick your issue. Uh, my concern is that they will run that state house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know it's about losing more voice and more community say over things like this. Mm -hmm. I, I find it really troubling, and the people that are supporting this mm -hmm. generally sh show concern over the presence of big, powerful mm -hmm. national lobbying uh, concerns um, seem to like not want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I really struggle with it. It's, it's mm -hmm. So I guess we're not ready to sign it tonight because okay. we want to make some changes to the language. OK. Um, I would suggest then that you, um, you know, if, if you have questions, you can um, you can call Vermont League of Cities and Towns or get in touch with me. Yep. And you know, maybe I can help provide some more information on that level or we, we could have a meeting about that. Um, can I leave this with you? Yep. Yes? Okay, good. Yep. And um, I have your phone number. You have my now phone number. I don't have to call you tomorrow. Thank right. you for coming. <laughs> I'm you sorry. Again. That's good. I'm glad You're that I came. You're looking for people to testify, get us on your distribution list so that okay. so we, know. we can get down there. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much for your support. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, for Thanks for coming. Right. Nice to meet you again. Nice I know I've met you before, but.
the name didn't ring a bell. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll leave that with you. Thanks, Thank Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All do right. we have this? Do we have a word version of this? Yes, we do. Who gets the meeting record? Yes. Yeah, we sent, I sent this out. We got it from DLCT and I sent it around. Okay. Um, we're going to make some changes to it. Yep. Yep. All right. Next up, IT. So we um, approved to award the RFP um, contract to RV Tech, and that's all well and good, but then it occurred to me that we did not authorize anyone to sign the <laughs> contract um, and associated documents, so I'm wondering if there would be a motion for uh, Denise, myself. I would make John, a motion anybody. to have Cliff sign it. Absolutely. All that work. Yeah. Please get your Hancock on it. Great. So move. I already moved it, so you're seconding okay, it. Okay, I'm seconding it. Okay, any further discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Is that, in on, I, is that in on IT? Well, just so you know what's going on there is now we will um, notify everyone that this is the decision that's been made. We will move forward in engaging into the new contract as quickly as possible with RB Tech so that we can start saving money. Great. We'll save money per month with this new contract. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Great. Is that it on IT? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you again for your work on yeah, it. Thanks. On that. It was huge. We couldn't have done it. Right. A huge amount of work and it's very time consuming, so thank you. No, I think it was a good process. It gave us all the opportunity to learn and understand more. And also realize where, you know, we, we had some holes in how we were managing right. our IT infrastructure. We will be able to do so in a much more informed fashion going forward. Right, because now we have a line item so we don't run into the problem. We'll be saving up for and the that, server. The and amount and that line item will be informed at, on an annual basis. Right. And we can uh, also be more engaged as a board with what's going on mm -hmm. with our IT needs. And right. It should be a process that rolls over year to year. Okay, so I sent around um, the appeal that we received from regarding the Grimaldi decision made by the DRB. Um, Christopher Bachman appealed it to Superior Court, which is the process after the DRB. If they appeal it, it goes to the Superior Court. Mm -hmm. um, I sent it around, all the information around to everybody. It's in the folder. I created a separate folder. Um, uh, the doc, Dorothy Neal is aware of it, John McCullough, the new zoning administrator, Bob Martin. Um, I sent it to Jim, asking him what his legal advice would be regarding this matter, and he basically said it's a neighbor mm -hmm. dispute, mm -hmm. and recommended that he just be on the list to receive information and updates in case something comes up that the town the cares about. Fear, right. right. So. So, right, so he would just be on our, we would just say, yes, please follow this, put our attorney on the certificate of service, because you don't know what's gonna come up. Yeah. Um, so that's the recommendation. I don't know if anybody has any further thoughts on it or comments. Yeah, it is. The neighbor stuff is never fun. Well, that whole situation was. Yeah. So I guess I would make a motion that we authorize our town attorney to follow the matter on our behalf and keep us informed. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I have a couple of things. And one thing I didn't put on here because I didn't know at the time what was going on. Um, you know, normally Sandra comes in like this meeting to give us her and her monthly update. Um, between holidays and the, the timing and Cynthia, who works for Nemrick, who's our auditor because of our charter, hasn't been able to come in and do what she needed to do. So Sandra requested, and I'm throwing this out there because I told her we kind of had things set 
for February 3rd that we're meeting at. Um, Mm -hmm. February 3rd. She wondered whether she could come in and do her update then. I told her I thought that we were pretty focused on what we were, we were, were going to be doing then and that I thought it could wait until we met on the 10th. I agree. But I wanted to see if everybody agreed with that. If anybody's in a big yank for it, we can have her come in on the 3rd. If not, we can have her come in on the 10th. There's, she's, not, she's not raising a red flag? No. Nope. No. That sounds great. Yep. Okay, so, um, so yes, the 10th. Thank you. That was my thought. Um, Curtis Pond Reader Grant. You'll remember we've done that two years in a row at Curtis Pond. Mm -hmm. um, they would like to do that again this coming season. There have been some issues in implementing the grants. Um, you know, when you're dealing with some teenagers, they're not always as good about giving you the information they're supposed to. There's been issues with filing reports in a timely manner to close out the grant. Um, so I want, us to th I want us to think about it between now and then. It takes quite a bit of staff time to, for the treasurer piece of it. Um, a volunteer is supposed to do the grant administration. Um, and there's been, I mean, I've, I spent last summer quite a bit of time trying to get information and helping to make sure that people did what they were supposed to do um, with regard to their role in, the, in this grant. So I just want you to think about it and we can talk about whether or not we think it is something that we want to do again. We can have the discussion while Sandra is still here on the 10th to talk about you know the amount of time it takes her um, Noreen Bryan is willing to step up and help more with this, and she's got, I think I sent it, I think it's in the folder, I sent you her ideas of a better way to manage the grant. But I mean, it's, it's a good program. We initially talked about wouldn't it be nice if it could move around to different ponds. Um, I asked that last year, <clears throat> and it didn't seem like that was the right timing. I thought, um, my recollection is that this, the reader program was initially presented to us through from the Conservation Commission, and am, am I remembering that correctly? I think initially they were involved in saying that this would be a good thing because Noreen Bryan and Colleen Bloom are members of the Lakes and Streams Committee, which is an offshoot of right. the Conservation Commission. We don't appoint them, but right. that's kind of how they, how they exist. Um, and you remember when this, the first year, Josh Mul, Mulholland maybe, Josh somebody came in and talked to the board about what this what this project was, how it could help to eliminate or help to deter the transfer of stuff on the bottom of boats, right? To educate people, right? Um, so that's what it's basically about. It's been I think the two volunteers, they were scheduled for like 15 hours a week for maybe five five weeks. Maybe it was they like- They try to concentrate on weekends, right? Right, they try to concentrate like on Friday afternoon yeah. through Sunday, because that's when the most people are gonna come out to Curtis yeah. Pond and use their boat. Mm -hmm. and Curtis Pond is one of the less healthy ponds in Calais. Like number 10 pond is pretty healthy. Um, Curtis Pond, because of its shallowness and age. age and all that stuff over the years, I think has more issues. It's mesotrophic. Yeah, that's, that's the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would like, um, yeah, my, my, what, for one thing, my point of making any important decisions has passed, mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, we're not doing that tonight. I would like to have somebody from the Conservation Commission or the Lakes and Streams Committee or whatever. So Noreen is in, lives in Maryland in the winter. Okay. So I, I'll ask her if there's somebody else she could suggest, or maybe she could do it by phone. Either, either way, because I, I feel like rather than us kind of putting ourselves in the um, 
decision making role and then adding adding we just heard from C Central Vermont Planning Commission we you know we have to recruit and organize a planning team team so this seems to me to fall within the the bailiwick of one of, of those groups, and, and I'd love for them to be well. I, what I'll do, taking, and this is why I taking the leadership role, right? And this is why I didn't want to have us try to make a decision tonight. I want to Absolutely get information. Not. I'll see if maybe we can get Noreen on my phone, see Colleen, who's been the grant administrator, to come in and answer questions or. Well, and, and maybe even present a recommendation, giving, given all of these challenges we've had, I would really love it if they would say, given all of this, and then mm -hmm. another question that's playing in my head is, did we budget for the match? It was in kind. It was in kind, yeah. okay. Um, so, yeah, so have, so have them take all of this information, right. including your input of how much time it took you, and let them and make a recommendation to, to us about how it could happen. Right. And I want to, you know, because when people do these grants, what they think, oh, it's in, it's in kind, it's no big deal, we can do the hours. But what they don't understand, and has been a problem years and years and years, is they don't realize how much time it takes on maybe the treasurer mm -hmm. to keep the records, you know, send the report. Sandra had to fill out a report. Right. Um, this shows the, um, the table with the deadlines. Right. So, um, anyways. So maybe I, I'll see it. I'm pretty sure I can get Noreen to say she'll be on my phone. She's the one that knows the most about it. She's the one who came up with some ideas to make, because I kept saying, how can we make the process run better so that we don't run into some of the issues we've run into not so much the first year, but more the second year. Yeah, I agree with what's being said here that uh, we need to see effectively a plan that will address the concerns and help us avoid mm -hmm. issues that arose last mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, without that, it's, it's just setting off the fail. Yeah. Well, and and then who's going to be who's going to be the owner of it? Who's taking the ownership role? Right. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's usually the ownership role should. The liability here, the town can incur some liability, and mm -hmm. we don't want to be in that position. No. We need to do diligence. Right. And I want more guarantee from the grant administrator of what the, of ownership and committing to. Right. Right. We, we want to delegate that. Right. We love it, and we want to delegate it. So, right, so there's not more of us trying to help pick up pieces. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, all right? Yeah. And that's that's kind of where I was. I was going to mention that this Ann Gilbert had called me, but then she showed up, <laughs> which was great. Um, it seems like there was, was there any other business, old business, new business? Seems like I had something I was going to bring up under other business or old business and now. Shoot, now I can't remember what it was. Maybe it's because of the time. Yeah. I have a quick question for if we could go into executive session on personnel. I'd make the motion that we go into an executive session for uh, personnel discussion. Do you want to approve any minutes first? No. Nope. <laughs> everybody's I think everybody's had their fill. We've been here since five. Mm -hmm. Well that's why I'm so exhausted. That's why you are, yeah. Exactly. exactly. We've been it's getting old John. I took Mental my exhaust. butt out of the chair at three and a half hours. Okay. I made a motion. Yeah, I thought we is there a second? Yes. yes. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 At eight fifty five. Thank you. 